I want to create an animation where I move this cube from one hand to another. He passes it from one hand to another. That's a little more complicated than constraining an object to one controller since you have to constrain it to two. And in order to do that successfully, it's best to create locators and create a nest of locators in order to constrain to multiple objects or um, multiple things. So I'm going to move the first locator into position before duplicating it, control D, and then dragging that duplication into the first locator there. So you've got like a, a little nest going, and then I'm going to nest the cube into that second locator. So you've got this, uh, these three lined up. Then I'm going to start creating keyframes. I'm gonna create keyframes for, um, the locator and the controller at one by just clicking S. And then I want to um, move the, the cube into place. I'm gonna move it using that top locator and I'm gonna put it right here. Just as a note, if you ever wanted to move the object independent of that locator, you can click the second locator and move it. So that is why we nest them like so. Um, but back to that first locator. So I'm gonna grab the thing I'm constraining to, this hand controller, and then I'm going to control click in the outliner, that first locator. It's easier to get it in the outliner. Um, okay, so I've got them both selected. Go to rigging, constrain, parent, and you'll see there's a blend parent here. If you don't have a blend parent in your outliner, um, and it's for the locator, just a note, um, click S and you'll create a key and that should create your blend parent. We want our blend parent set to one. That means it's constrained. If it's set to zero, it won't be constrained. So we're gonna key selected and then we will do a little animation to five. I'm just gonna move this hand inward like that. And that's pretty much good enough. Um, I'm gonna grab this other hand here. I'm gonna keyframe it at one, just whatever, and then move it in. It's gonna grab the box and take it away. Um, very rough animation, please don't judge me. Uh, you'll see I created a keyframe automatically by moving the hand, that's because this is on. If it's red, it means it's on. It creates keyframes when you move things. Super useful if you like to work like that. Um, okay, so now I need to turn this constraint, this top locator constraint off and create a new constraint for locator two. So I'm gonna go to number four. The, the keyframe before you turn off your constraint is important because that will stay on and you want you don't want any um, like slow moving constraint. You want things to be locked together or not. So it has to be back to back keyframes. So at four, we want to keyframe, we'll just S keyframe it all. And then at five, we're gonna S again, keyframe it all, but I'm gonna turn my blend parent to zero instead. That turns off the constraint. And you'll see if I just move the hand back, it's not constrained anymore. The box is no longer constrained to the hand, but I'm gonna keep it the way it is for now. And I'm going to create another constraint to this right hand, his right hand. So if I click the controller here, and then I, like I did before, control click the second locator, um, in that nest and then constrain parent. Now I want to set a keyframe for locator two, S. It created our blend parent there, it's at zero. We also need a blend parent right before, like I did to the other um, locator, I need two. So I clicked an S there, blend parent zero, that's what we want and then the, motion, the moment it changes hands, one for that second locator. Now, to see if it worked. I'm gonna to go to keyframe 10 and move both of my hand uh, controllers out and see which hand it sticks to. There you go. The box is now in his right hand and if I move his left hand away, no longer there. So it has moved hands as you can see. Boom, very cool. Uh, also you'll know that or notice that the cube itself is not constrained to anything and that can be really useful depending on what your animation is. You can still adjust that without having it locked in. So if I wanted to twist it uh, at keyframe um, 
10 for some reason and then have it less twisted here, I could do that. And it kind of like allows you the agency that you wouldn't have if it was constrained itself. That's why we nest within other things like locators or groups. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. It's a complicated theory. And um, there are definitely situations that are more complicated than just moving a box from hand to hand. But this is the basics. Uh, remember that when you set a constraint um, on a locator or anything, you're going to get this blend parent when you have a keyframe and you want to have side by side frames, one where the blend parent is zero and one where it is one. And this is exactly the moment where the constraint needs to end on one and begin on another. So on one, it's going from zero to one and on the other, it's going from one to zero. And that is everything in a nutshell. So I hope you guys got this. If you didn't, just you know, write me a message and uh, check out my other videos. I've got some other things on constraints too. So thanks guys.